Hey guys, Roger here, pastor of Preaching and Vision at Matthew's Table. We're glad that you decided to join us and tune in to see our service. Uh, I would say that this isn't something that we hope you replace your local church with, but this is something to uh, just build on that and encourage you and help you see Jesus in a bigger, better way. I'm Pastor Nick Martin, pastor of Discipleship and Outreach, and we pray this just blesses you and grows you in your relationship with Christ. Okay, so good morning. Thank you for joining us. What you may not know is that this morning, if you're here, you are now a part of Matthew's Table's history just by being here. And we're really excited this morning, so I just want to go ahead and get right to it. I know some of you already know, but what you don't know is, is what I want to talk about to begin with, is that we have a huge announcement that we've been dying to share with you guys and plan to wait again uh, but due to fall break, we'll just do the family meeting in two weeks. But with fall break, we knew it'd be a while before everyone would be back together. So here it is. Y'all ready? Yeah. Who's ready? Yeah. All right. This is my announcement. The same God of the Bible is the same God today. Yeah. Same God of the Bible is the same God of today. Today. It's the same God that we teach about, we preach about, that we've been called to remind you to be faithful to week in and week out. It's the same God. It ain't a little G God. It's a big G God. Big God. Real God. He's alive and he's well. Same God who split the Red Sea is the same God I serve and follow today. He's a way maker, miracle worker, and a promise keeper who's alive and well and commands the stars to rise and shine. He holds the world in the palm of his hand and his glory is declared from the heavens above and the sky proclaims his handiwork. He's a healer and he's a provider. Somebody say amen. And he's still in the business. He's still in the business of saving sinners unworthy of his love and using them to bring him glory. And I ain't even told you about his son yet, so I'm going to ask a friend of mine, a good brother of mine, to give me a little help. Go ahead and play the video. If I had the pleasure of bringing up Christ, this is just how I would do it. It ain't got to be the way you do it. You might not think it's just right, but this is how I would do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction. His credits are too long for this. He has done the impossible time after time.
That's my God. He's a big God, and I'm looking at a lot of impossibilities sitting in this crowd this morning that he's made possible. And what I want you to know this morning is that he's actively working through the lives of those who've uh, placed their faith in him. He's the author of this very moment this morning. Our history is his story. Our history is his story. Written before he spoke creation into existence. Leading up to what each of us are a part of and celebrating this morning. And if you hear anything I say, I hope it's just how big and good God is to his people. Because when you experience the living God in a personal, intimate way, your life will be changed forever. Amen. Earlier this year in April 2020, we began discussions with the leadership of Buena Vista Baptist Church about sharing facilities because we'd outgrown the Monday Center and was in desperate need of more space. And on May 7th of 2020, we arrived at Buena Vista to hold our first service. And on September 27th, of this same year, Buena Vista Baptist Church voted unanimously to transfer ownership to Matthew's table. <laughs> and assume full responsibility for all properties and possessions located on 23rd and Allen Street, the seats that you're sitting in now. All as a result of faith, much like what's been recalled for thousands of years when God called Abraham and many others that's recorded in the Hall of Faith, Hebrews chapter 11. Read that, your homework today. Go and read where they record all of these individuals, and, it's, and every one of them says, by faith, Enoch, by faith, Abel, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Moses, every one of them consistently had faith in common. Illustrating very well the expectation for every believer of how you experience God's supernatural provision. So I'm going to share just a part of it and there'll be a few verses throughout this morning that I also point you to. Hebrews 11 verses 8 through 10 should be on the screen. If you got your Bible, you can turn there. I'll read to you. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, doesn't say, by his good standing, by his merits, by how great of a guy he was, it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. We just inherited something that we didn't ever think we would inherit. He went out even though he did not know where he was going. Three years ago, we didn't know where we were going. And we didn't care. By faith, he stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise. I want you to remember this part. Living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, co-heirs of the same promise. If you've, tr if you've trusted in Christ this morning, you are co-heirs of the inheritance, the promised land that is to come. Verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations. And this is what I want you to see out of all this whose architect and builder is God. The living God who's building and who strategically architects things to which you are sitting in this morning. God calls on and uses His people to obey Him for extraordinary things in faith. Not based on and, 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 and not, what, not based on what you know or what you see. It's not the call that comes. God saves you, He initiates that, He saves you, and then He gives you a job to do. Period. 
I just wish I was closer to the Lord, Roger. Yeah, well, what are you doing for the Lord? Got no time for that. God gives tests you can't study for to have the right answers. God's tests have to be taken to be given the answers. Okay? Listen, I need you all to see how God works in your life because I can promise this is life changing. Example, the seat that you are sitting in this morning is a result of a test given, a test taken, and a test passed. And God's very own supernatural provision. Each of you, God has called out from death to life, darkness to light, like Abraham, and has a plan and a purpose and will be experiencing ongoing tests in your walk with the Lord. You never pass his class and graduation occurs when he calls you home. So that you don't rely on your vision, but rather his provision. <sighs> God does and will test you, and there's a very good chance he's giving you a test right now. You just aren't willing to take it because that's what he does. You could argue, you know, Roger, I haven't heard him ask anything of me like he did Abraham. Like, that's a pretty big deal. I, I feel good just making it to church on Sunday. But y'all know that the teacher remains silent while the test is being taken. So that's not the issue. The issue is you see the type of test God gives like in our passage this morning, and you realize the sacrifice and discomfort that comes from what you consider ordinary, so you forfeit the extraordinary. Truth is, we all find more comfort in your vision, what you can see, where we can adjust things, manage and manipulate things to be the way we want them so that we're safe and secure as opposed to the way God would have them. Amen. Charles Spurgeon, Spurgeon begs the question that you need to answer today and, and me as well. Does the world satisfy you? Then you have your reward and portion in this life. Make much of it for you shall know no other happiness. Too many Christians are living mediocre lives, chasing this American dream, trusting that the quality of life will improve because of your best life now. Not realizing God's promise to provide is one that can be extremely liberating for the child of God because it should diminish all the worry and anxiety and stress of how you'll afford to make ends meet. God's provision, all right? Listen, like, so what, what's provision? The Latin root of the word provision is pro is on behalf of, and vision is to see. So provision simply means that he will see you through it. God's going to see to it, and if he leads you to it, he has to see you through it. Matthew 11, verse 11. What father among you, are there any fathers in here this morning? What father among you, if your son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a snake? God owns everything and distributes according to his plan and his purpose. So where God leads you, he's already provided. Everything you need, which I understand is hard for you to follow because we like to know that things will look a certain way. That's your vision. But as one of your pastors, it's my job to teach you what the Bible says is true. And what we learned from Abraham this morning is there's a door that leads to another world that you can't even fathom that's open with faith in God and obedience to God. And only for the children of God. Which is an act of worship, which is our next lesson learned from Abraham's test. Now, I know many of you, when hearing the word worship, you typically think of singing songs. And although there's truth in that, it's not at all limited to that. 
we declare by song and praise as a response and reminder of who He is to us and what He's done for us. And while I love to get my worship on, singing and praising God, I like to have something to sing about. Those attending church only on Sunday, but live like the world the rest of the week, makes me wonder what they're singing about. (laughs) Believers will experience God in a personal and intimate way when they trust and obey Him, which is the primary act of worship. What you trust in and rely on is what you worship. Usually evidenced by your life, which is why God continues to test the believer so he can keep you on track. Each of us here this morning, truly born again, is walking a path that is not one of chance, but rather a supernatural experience where divine providence is unlocked by faith and obedience. Now, just got lost. All right. I didn't stop. That's from a sermon that I preached five months ago. It's from earlier this year, from a series entitled God's Promises, where we spoke about God's faithfulness, God's provision, and our perseverance. It's not a coincidence. Five months ago, we were preaching that very sermon and the Lord has now provided. (laughs) Hebrews 11, verse 1. You guys should memorize this. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Quit waiting to see everything before you respond. Quit waiting to have all the answers before you respond. Quit planning out what you're going to do for God before you respond. Francis Chan said God doesn't call us to be comfortable. He calls us to trust Him so completely that we are unafraid to put ourselves in situations where we'll be in trouble if He doesn't come through. Are you living like that today? That's the type of faith I'm talking about. That's the type of faith it takes to respond to God, to play a small part so that those who chose to take the test can tell of all of the unbelievable things that God can do. Like Moses. Moses gets called out by God, argues with him, you have the wrong guy. God says, hush your mouth. And obey me, and he steps out. He pulls the Hebrews out of slavery from Egypt and walks through the Red Sea. That's that's how big God is. That's the God that we serve. That's not a story. That's not a myth. That's not something you make up. That's real. And we can know that this morning because of what God has done for us. And then what Moses does, he gets at Mount Sinai, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. And this is what he says. Be on your guard and diligently watch yourselves so that you don't forget the things your eyes have seen. And so that they don't slip from your minds as long as you live. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren. This will be something that we teach our children and our grandchildren. And thankfully, Buena Vista did the same thing. And I'm excited to share that with you. I'm going to share just just a version of that. Uh, it's, It's super cool. Super, super cool. 1920. Uh, and, and, you know, I mentioned this earlier. It's like 
You know what we do, unfortunately? We're so caught up in ourselves and what is going on in our lives. Like you get invited to church and you just show up and you don't even know the story. You don't even know how we got here. You don't know how Buena Vista got here, right? Until you recall all the things that God's done. 1920. 14 people in this neighborhood got together and decided they'd start a church. James LaFoe. Y'all know him? You about to. James LaFoe, in total faith, donated two plots of land for them to erect a church building. This was an empty field. Did y'all know in uh, 1920, or it may have been later, 1950. No, it was like 1980, wasn't it, Nick? Anyways, this was the extent of Owensboro. Nothing went past this. There was no Freddy's. There was no Panera. There wasn't even the Kentucky Wesleyan Park Plaza. This was it. Empty field. God called James LaFoe and said, this is what I need you to do. What did James LaFoe do? He responded. He donated in total faith two plots of land for 14 people. Originally it was called the LaFoe Memorial Baptist Church. And they started meeting on this property. Hey, you remember earlier when I was reading uh, Hebrews 11, 8 through 10, and I told you to remember the tents? In 1920 to 1921, they were gathering on this property in tents. No building. And originally it was called the Lafoe Memorial Baptist Church. Until they completed the basement, which is below us, as their sanctuary. I got the book, man. It just tells the whole story. There's pictures where uh, you can see the steps that y'all walked up to. That's all there is. And there's little kids out there, and it's, it's almost like a horror movie where there's a creepy picture. But, like, you can see it. You know what I mean? So cool. So cool. In faith. That's what they did. The Lafoe name... James LaFoe is still being mentioned 100 years later. All we know is that he donated two plots of land in total faith. And that's all we need to know. That's all we need. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. And even though he's dead, he still speaks through his faith. We are talking about James LaFoe 100 years later because of his faith. Not long after that, they began to grow. I think they were up to like 95 people. And they built a bigger sanctuary onto their existing spot. That's what we're sitting in now, the sanctuary here. So they began to save money to do so. However, in 1931, the banks were wiped out. I'm assuming by the Depression. It doesn't necessarily say. And they lost the $4,000 that they had saved up over those years. Now, I don't know, but I'm guessing in 1930, $4,000 was probably like $100,000 today. Imagine the hit they took. Imagine the obstacle that was created. They had a vision. They, they were called by God. They responded in total faith, and that, hit, that hits them. However, they refused to give up, and due to their faith, they decided they would start investing in bricks. Every family, every Sunday would bring one brick to church. And they stored them up until they had enough to build the sanctuary that you're sitting in today. For five years, from 1932 to 1937, if you look at the thing out there on the steps as you walk out, it'll tell you, church started in 1920, building erected in 1937. Five years they saved enough bricks and money to start the construction. They had a vision for advancing the kingdom of God that was far greater than what they were capable of achieving in their own strength. And despite the obstacles in faith, they carried it out according to the call. Thousands of those bricks 
are in these very same walls today. Bricks of faith. Can you imagine coming to church with a brick? I hope you can. Because that's the faith I'm talking about. I found a... Uh, no, I've lost it, or maybe... I found a sermon uh, in the office from... I hope that wasn't on camera anyway. I found a sermon that a man preached in 1988 from this very same stage. And what they were doing was celebrating the history of Buena Vista. And he was telling all these stories of faith. And he titled the sermon, Who Can Forget? Who Can Forget? Recalling events that they had experienced and overcome by faith. And in this sermon, this is what he says. He says, Who Can Forget? Who can forget the times we've laughed together, played together, hurt together, and worked together? We can. And then towards the end, he also tells the story where these properties behind us on the 24th Street had came uh, available for purchase, and they were looking to continue to expand. And so he had a farmer that was one of his trustees, and that night the farmer went home, and he went out into his field, and he got on his knees, and he prayed God to reveal to him God's will for them. And however it happened, it was affirmed through a conversation or God responding in, in, in a dream. I, I don't know, but it just tells that the man ran into the next meeting and he explained to every one of them, look, God answered my prayer. This is exactly what we're supposed to do. Who can forget? Who can forget? And then I think about the current members who have been so generous and faithful, trusting God, some for 50 years. They've been here for 50 years. They don't do all that stuff people do today. Let's church hop. Let's find the one that's got the best coffee. Let's go wherever they got stuff for our kids to you know, jump off zip lines and everything else because that's the better. They, don't, they didn't do none of that then. They were faithful. They've been here for 50 years. One member said she has had six generations Go through this church. Grow up, accept Christ, be baptized. Recently, they were offered to sell this property, property and make a considerable amount of money, but were committed to keeping to the original vision of the church, the 14 people and Mr. LaFoe that donated and by the sweat of their brow provided bricks of faith by finding another body of believers to carry on advancing the kingdom of God. Now think about Pastor Tom Pelfrey and, and his wife and them faithfully serving day in and day out. And them calling us and saying, hey, if you guys, if you guys want to, why don't we get together and talk about your all space problem. Meanwhile, all of us, not knowing what God would do, um, personally, I can testify that I was perfectly happy at my home church. I was actively serving, and I had recently been affirmed by my pastors as being in line to become a pastor there. It was the conversation, it was the plan for me there. So I didn't leave that church, because I was disgruntled or unhappy or they had done anything to me. They were the best people I'd ever been around. I loved that place and those people, but I knew God was calling me to something more. Unique would be a good word. Non-traditional to say the least. I'd met Nick Martin over the course of the summer in 2000. 16, matter of fact, we were working in Emmaus Walk together and I didn't know them. And I'll never forget, uh, before knowing them, Jonna pulled Nick aside and said, I don't know why, but I feel like one day you, you're going to be doing ministry with him. And we began a Bible study out of my own home. And oftentimes we would talk about how we both felt like 
God was calling us to start a church on the West End and minister to the folks of that area. We left our home church and all our friends and family and everything we knew that we were familiar with against many others' wishes and recommendations. Believe that. With no plan, no money, no music team, no preaching experience, as many of you probably have noticed. My first sermon on May 14, 2017 was four pages long. I think back on that, and I don't even know what I... I can't even... Painful. Who was there? Was anybody there on that day? A few of you? Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> no building. Roger, what are you... What, what are y'all going to do? You don't even have a building. I said, the building's not the problem. We don't even have people. We just know what we're supposed to do. And we're going to do it. And on May 7th of 2017, we started Matthew's Table down at the Monday Center. We put our money together, our tithe, and we rented that building. And we showed up. And we showed up. And shortly after, I think we only had 20 or 30 people that day. Shortly after, Stephen Kidd moved his entire family and came, and God had all three of us serving in the elder roles, the leadership for Matthew's table. We were leading like 20, 25 people. You know what I mean? You know, our moms and, and our sisters and them, they, they, they're obligated to come. Like, <laughs> And then some other people that probably are still considered crazy, but regardless, we were there. And I, I can tell you personally, uh, man, we met a lot of resistance along the way. I remember um, bumping into a friend of mine who was a pastor, and I, I respected him, and I still do, and I thought a lot of him, and I, I, I was like, bro, check us out. God's called us to start a church. And he said, all I can tell you is you better hope you have a lot of money. And I said, I ain't got a lot of money, bro. All I got is my faith and Jesus Christ. What's the worst could happen? It, it fail? If you fail preaching the gospel to ten people, did you ever fail? No. We met a lot of resistance along the way. Many people said this wouldn't last and couldn't work because we didn't have any money, but it didn't stop us because we all worked full-time jobs. I worked 50, 60 hours a week at Don Moore. Plus did this, right? Nick worked full-time at Friends of Sinners, which is probably even more hours than what I was working at Don Moore. Stephen had a full-time job, highly stressful, still does. We did this anyways because honestly we cared less about looking like your traditional church because we just wanted to reach people for Christ with no church politics and no denominational restrictions. We were called, we had a heart to see people come to Christ and obeyed God even when it seemed to not make sense. We played music, I don't even know what it was from. We just, I think we popped a cassette in, I don't remember. A CD. We put a CD in the thing and we were like, man, what's people going to do? We're like, I don't know. And we pop it in and we looked around at one moment and everybody was just like praising the Lord. Like nobody cared. They were like, hey, I found my home. And we just kept doing those things. And eventually Charlie and Brandy came to their senses and jumped on board like I told them to. <laughs> Who can forget? Who can forget when the bus pass ministry got started and we met some of the folks from that area? Matter of fact, Jonna, Jonna and Nick was there and Jonna saw these, this couple walking down the street from uh, the neighborhood right next to the Monday Center. And she yells out to them and they're like, hey, what's it? Hey, you know, here's a hot dog, whatever. And, and they're like, hey, what's going on? Well, we're, we're a new church here in this community. They ended up coming to the church and they're still here. They're not here right now because of the COVID. Robert and Julie, y'all know them. Who can forget? Who can forget just how missional we were? Being very missional to the point where it just made people uncomfortable in the Cadillac area and meeting some amazing people. One being Miss Patty, who's still here with us today. I 
And by the way, as a result of her ministry, we're busing 10 to 20 people from the Cadillac area every weekend, right? Like, God's good. <laughs> Who can forget? Brittany uh, was reminding me of one event. We, we did these events where we were just like, hey, we're just going to show up Saturday and feed a bunch of people. And, you know, we might have a milk crate or two, people standing on, you know, sharing their story or singing from, whatever. Uh, but Brittany was reminding me that when we would do those things, we would just say, hey, let's plan to do this. And uh, just randomly out of nowhere, there would be the food donated so that we could do it. And at this one event, there was over 100 people in line from that area and we got all the way down to where the food started dwindling. And when the last person walked up, there was one hot dog left. That was God. Who can forget? Who can forget one couple who was literally living on the street named Whammy and Katrina, who's here today. But, but this is my point. Y'all see them now and you're like, oh, that's cool. They're driving the bus and helping out. No, you don't understand. They would often come to the community meal that we'd have once a month. And they, you remember the uh, wagon that you pulled? I don't know if it was Radio Flyer or what. It was obvious they were not obeying Jesus. Like, I didn't have to point that out to them. Oh, but we hugged them, we loved them, and we point, we'd invite them to church. And what, for whatever reason, when Whammy found himself in a, in a low place, he decided, hey, let's go to Matthew's table. And they've been here ever since, and they're probably serving people more than y'all are. God saved them and sent them to us. And then Whammy's mom comes. Give him a shout, Angie. God saves her, and she gets baptized, and she's been here ever since, and she's my amen person. Amen. Who can forget? We did church services in the Cadillac parking lot. People standing out on their front porch 100 yards away, listening to everything we were saying. And at the jail, which one of the inmates who was behind the fence is now on our music team. His name's Maurice Hanley. And as a result of coming to that jail service we did with the inmate, look, we took the whole church is what I'm trying to tell you. We was like, hey, check this out. Next weekend, if y'all show up at the Monday Center, you'll be the only ones here because we're all going to the jail. <laughs> so you either get in where you fit in or stay home, right? right? And by doing that, not only did Maurice really feel like, man, I feel like this is where I'm supposed to go when I get out of jail, he goes back to the cell and starts doing Bible studies with a man named Stephen. Where are you at, Stephen? Raise your hand. He's still here today. <laughs> Who can forget? Who can forget? Who can forget we did the homeless event where we would sleep out on the front lawn of the Monday Center. Everybody did but me. But the point is, we did it. Hey, and you know what we did? We slept in tents. Have y'all heard about tents this morning? Man named William. William, raise your hand. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you cry, Bob. He was living on the riverbanks. And when we went down there and we, we, we invited him to come to the homeless awareness event, not because he fit the title of the event, because we really wanted him to come. And we wanted to love him. And we wanted to tell him about Jesus. And man, I'll never forget, he told me that night, the only conversation I got to have with him, he said, look, I'm going to be real with you, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really care about being here and all this stuff you got going on. All I know is that I was going to be safe tonight sleeping here on the lawn with all you guys as opposed to where I'm regularly sleeping. He stayed the next day for church and he ain't missed a church service that I can remember since. <laughs> Only man I know that rides a bike to church on Sundays, rain, sleet, or snow. 
Tell me about that. That's the kind of faith I'm talking about. And he's the one we just helped with his rent because Shoney was only giving him a few hours a week. He's now looking for another job. But he's employed, he's got his own apartment, and he loves serving in the church. That's why he sits by the face, uh, Facebook thing. <laughs> Who can forget? Who can forget? The jail letter ministry that we started at Tina Seaton was running and writing. we were writing letters to those... Hey, well, you know what the Bible says, remember those in prison, right? And we were writing letters. And I'll never forget one Sunday morning, this lady, Rochelle, she's here. Where are you at, Rochelle? She's back here. Rochelle comes to church. And it's cool that we were writing her those letters and everything, but what you don't know is I met her dad in 2006 when I got out of prison, and I went to a Bible study accountability group, and I looked up to him, and he poured into me, and I'll never forget every Sunday night we prayed for Rochelle Lilly, and I didn't have a clue who she was. But Matthew's table was writing her letters, and she told me that sign. I remember looking, I remember standing there and looking to the side just randomly, and here she comes. She walked straight up to me, and she said, all I can tell you is that y'all have been writing me consistently for two years, maybe, a jail letter. And I knew when I got out, this would be the first place that I come, and she's been here ever since. <laughs> Who can forget? Who can forget the leadership meetings we would have trying to scramble around and figure out what we were going to do? And oftentimes we'd have to increase the budget. We're the poorest church in town, by the way. And we had to increase the budget by thousands of dollars. And one time we was around like 8000 a month. And we were like, look, the only way we're going to make this work is if we raise it to 12.5. And they were saying, we were all saying, but we're not bringing in 12.5. We're getting lucky to bring in 8. The next month we raised it to 12.5 and we brought in 12.6. Wow. Not to mention many others who we knew that couldn't fight the realization that they were supposed to be a part of this and jumped in and led to us growing exponentially. And I don't even have the time to tell hundreds of stories of so many more people who found their way here and became a part of our journal or our family. Who can forget? Who can forget that on April 19th, 2019, I made a journal entry that I took a picture of. I don't want to read it to you real quick, just to kind of show you how God works, right? But uh, we had redone the floors, and we had a big bookcase, and we probably had like 150 books, and we had to take them all out of the bookcase so we could move the uh, bookshelf so that they could do the floors. And they all end up on the kitchen table, and about a week later, Brittany's like, hey, I don't know why, but I'm just going to leave this journal out in case, you know, I think she was trying to communicate, you're struggling, you need a journal. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But she left it out on the kitchen table. I didn't touch it for two weeks. And then they voted to give us the building, and I thought, you know what, I better write this down because I'll forget what happened and when it happened. This is the last entry in this journal, April 9th, 2019. Church is growing, sorry, church is growing and not sure what we will do with lack of space. Trusting God is without a doubt easier said than done. Then this is, thank you, Andy. And, 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 and then this is what I put. September 29, 2020. Been a long time, however... It's ironic that the last entry above mentioned growing and not knowing what to do because on Sunday, September 27th, Buena Vista voted to give us the building. That's God. We were growing quicker than we could keep up with and finding it more difficult to manage due to only having a home to work out of on Wednesday nights for an hour and Sunday morning till 12. We were renting and that's just that's all we had, right? We got to a point where people were gladly standing up in the back and some sitting in the hallways with the doors open just to hear the gospel. 
We started to look for buildings, to which all of them were well out of our budget. We were scrambling around trying to figure out what it was we could do to compensate for the number of people that God was sending. There were ones that we did look at uh, that were run down, like literally the ceilings were, were coming or falling down. And any decent one that we found, the city planning and zoning shut us down. I finally had to meet with one of the city commissioners. And I asked him, hey, why is it that the planning and zoning, every building that we look at in this, we looked at at least 15 buildings. And it was either too much or it was in too bad of shape. And finally, and if that wasn't the case, the city planning and zoning would say no every time. And so finally I meet with the city commissioner and he basically tells me, look, the reason that they're doing that to you guys is because you won't be paying property taxes because you're a tax-exempt uh, uh, church, so they don't want to mess with you. So finally, the planning and zoning tells it. They give it to us straight. They said, look, man, here's the deal. Bottom line, y'all stop wasting your time because we ain't going to try to help you. What you need to do is try to find an old church that's willing to give you their building or allow you to use their facility. Who can forget when I left Don Moore last September? Best job I ever had, worldly job. Made the most money I'd ever made in my life. God called, said, look, it's time for you to go. I got something more for you. I remember talking to Stephen about it, and he's like, well, you know, it is what it is. Like, I, I know you well enough to know if that's what he's telling you to do, you're going to do it. So I left there without a paycheck for two months. Shortly after that, Nick followed a couple of months later. Without the finances to justify doing such a thing, we, we had a few conversations about, hey, you know, maybe we need to put the deeds to our houses up to buy a location. If we're really committed and we really believe this is what God wants from us, we would be willing to do such a thing. We were planning a leadership meeting. I don't know if uh, the leadership remembers this. To start considering two services at the Monday Center when the COVID hit. That was our next move. We were going to do two services at the Monday Center. It seemed to be our only option. Every door we thought was going to be a possibility got slammed in our face. Turns out, due to not affording to buy bricks like they did, because of not having a place of our own to store them at, our bricks of faith were to stay the course and remain faithful to His plan and His purpose. Well, what, what would you attribute to your success, Roger? We preach the Bible. We preach Christ crucified. We trust God and we teach our folks to love God and love others. That's been our church growing strategy since day one. <laughs> May 7th. May 7, 2020, was exactly three years later from our launch date, May 7, 2017, when we came to this facility and almost exactly 100 years later that Buena Vista started. They're celebrating 100 years this year. They just weren't able to because of the COVID or maybe because God was going to give this to Matthew's table. I don't know. We've been given something no man could have ever dreamed up. We, something has happened that nobody could have ever guessed could happen. We are a part of something that nobody could even come up with a story as good as the one I've shared with you. Think about this. God's up there, and he's like this. Let's see. Roger... 48 felonies, um, didn't go to seminary, never preach. Oh, and then there's Nick, and uh, he's got armed robbery. And, um, you know, these guys, they've been to church about as long as, you know. Uh, all right, let's just do this. That makes a good story, right? Wouldn't happen. If you all sat down right now and you planned out everything that's unfolded, you would not have written down the same story that God has written for every one of us. You wouldn't have done it, right? May 7, 2020, three years later, 100 years later, 
We've been given something no man could have ever dreamed up. The same God of the Bible is the same God of today. You couldn't even make this up. And the only thing that achieves such things is the faith of a few good people, all of us, willing to look crazy for God. I was talking to Joe Welsh about this. The music team can probably start heading this way. I was talking to Joe Welsh the other day about this, and, and he sent me this. What God has for us, no man can take. Right? What God doesn't have for us, no man can give us. And I started thinking, you know what's crazy? We were looking at $300,000 buildings. We thought maybe that was the solution. If we were to be able to afford anything, it would have been something in that ballpark because it was only about $2,000 a month. We can fix this budget. We can cut this out. Might have to add this, but $300,000 might be in our ballpark. The problem was God was going to give us a $3.1 million building. Hey, that ain't, that ain't even it. Check this out. And he handed it over in the year of clear vision, 2020. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, this gets better. In the neighborhood called Buena Vista. You know what that means? Good view. 2020 clear vision with a good view. We all got a good view this morning. Amen. In the heart of the city to carry out the promise that was given to Abraham long ago. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith it's impossible to please God. You want to know what's wrong with your relationship with the Lord this morning? Is that it's impossible to please God without fully trusting in Him. Since the one who draws near to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. Amen. Put the world aside and follow Jesus. And we've been reminded this morning what God has done and is continuing to do. And my question for you this morning is what will they say about you? How is it you will be remembered? Where will you leave your brick of faith? Who can forget? May we never forget what our eyes have seen this morning so that it steers up our faith to be zealous for Jesus, spreading the gospel with all those who don't know Him. Amen. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, there's plenty of people here that would love to tell you about Him or share the gospel with you. What better day to be a part of His story? the history of Matthew's table. God has revealed Himself by showing up and showing out and desires all men and women to be saved, which is why we are here and be every reason why we continue what Buena Vista has done so well for a hundred years. Who said He can't do the extraordinary with the ordinary? Matthew's table! Welcome to your new home! All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the sermon. If you guys would like to stay connected to us and what we're doing, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can like us on Facebook. You can also visit our website at MatthewStableOnesboro.com. A cool feature on our website is we have a prayer wall. You can place your prayer on there and someone will be praying for you. To partner with us financially, you can text the number 73256 with Matthew's Table with no space in between. Because of your giving, we can be a missional church that reaches the lost and goes hits the streets for Jesus. Thank you.